Good evening, everybody. So, like most of you, I had a full day today wearing my uh, N95 mask over that facial shield. My greatest relief during the day is lunchtime when I can take my N95 off and just look at my uh, face, so to speak. Uh, it's been a really challenging time. I am sure you're going to all say the same uh, as we uh, endure this COVID era that is definitely not going away soon. So I thought the topic tonight was apropos. Uh, we're going to talk about perio. We're going to talk about maintenance. We're going to touch on COVID for sure and how they all really just come together. So with that, let's do it. This is today. This is crazy, but this is today. I'm not going to get into politics. It's absolutely not my slam tonight or slam tonight. <clears throat> but when you read this, it says the World Health Organization advises delaying of non-essential dental care in areas of COVID-19 community transmission, AKA, I guess that means the United States. And it also advises it, with guidance cites the high risk of dental professionals either being infected with SARS, you know, COVID or passing the infection to patients. <laughs> It also encourages providers, which is tonight's discussion, to use alternative means to promote good oral care during this pandemic. So I'm just gonna say this, and this is on the record. I feel safer at my office than I do anywhere else. With the precautions that we have in place today, my hygienists are comfortable, my teams are comfortable, and my patients are comfortable. I charge $25 per PPE patient. I've had one complaint and that patient can go bye-bye. I've invested thousands and thousands of dollars so that I can say to the World Health Organization that I can comfortably take care of my patients. And that's what this is all about. Tonight, we're all about maintenance. Tonight, we're all about perio. That's where we're going. So let's talk periodontal disease. The prevalence of periodontal disease, based on a study that was um, that is now it's crazy, that is ten years old, and it's the classic study, shows that it's really far more prevalent in our practices than most offices are diagnosing. And when we look at the numbers, and then we look at the numbers of those above the age of sixty-five, which is the fastest growing private practice growth or private fee growth patient. So let me say it again. Those baby boomers are in your practice of 70% of the wealth in this country. That's a fact. It's the fastest growing age group of basically private, private pay patients. Of that group, 64% with isolated to more than isolated areas of moderate to severe periodontal disease. I am what I would call an adult dentist. I hate kids. I love them as I love them around the table. I love them at dinner. I just don't want them in my chair. So if there's somebody who can speak on adult dentistry and what I've seen, this number is very, very relevant to tonight's course. The disease is also much more prevalent in males, Mexican Americans diabetics, patients with sleep apnea, patients with uncertain medications that we all know about, mouth breathers, smokers, people with stress, alcoholics, poor nutrition. It can be obviously a disease via genetics. It's also higher in certain hormonal diseases tobacco users, xerostomia, lower income, and vapors. Now, we're not even talking comorbidities yet, gang. So when you start looking at your patients, and this is just where they're higher, and obviously I'm on the south side of Chicago, and I can tell you that we see a tremendous amount of periodontal disease. And it could be multifactorial, whether it's from lower income, poor nutrition, or whether it's the sleep apnea patients that are referred to our practice. But what we absolutely do see is a ton of perio. 
So I thought I'd put this up there. This is a hot topic and I think it's relevant. So there's a professor Kumar and Perry Donis, very well renowned. And she just released right during COVID, I think in May, April or May, her studies, that daily e-cigarette users daily had higher levels of infection causing bacteria that put them at the high risk for a range of oral health problems. The bacterial populations in vapor's mouths resemble periodontitis. So this is another group that we have to be identifying. And the bacterial threat to oral health in vapors was seen whether they're using nicotine or nicotine-free products. So you're gonna see more and more of these in your practice. I don't see as many because I see really most of my patients are over 50, but I will absolutely tell you this is a huge concern in perio. Oral systemic links. I'm gonna to touch on this because of the relevance with COVID. We know that, it's, that periodontal disease can be tied to cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease. We know for a fact from Offenbacher studies, preterm birth weights, female fertility, chronic kidney disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, osteoporosis, and diabetes. And I think diabetes to me, based on my patient population is huge. So let's just touch on it. Diabetic patients, we all know, are more susceptible to infection. Periodontal disease equates to infection. Diabetic patients are more likely to have periodontal disease. So if you have a patient, we've diagnosed numerous diabetics in our office that have periodontal disease and really not showing really tremendous calculus levels and really bad biofilm issues. One of our big thoughts are, is this patient a diabetic? Diabetic patients are more likely to be negatively impacted in regards to their overall health based on the fact that if they do have active periodontal disease, if they have active periodontal disease, it's going to affect their blood sugar levels. So these patients need our absolute treatment because these people are at a much greater risk for long-term diabetic complications. This is such a huge emphasis in my practice. And I'm a GP, everybody. I just want to breathe. Additionally, other comorbidities can be rheumatoid arthritis, erectile dysfunction, cancer, obesity, and cognitive impairment. So there's no question from all our studies and listening to Dwayne Keller, the founder of this company, those same bugs in periodontal disease are so involved in so many comorbidities. When we look at this chart, the number one comorbidity is diabetes. And, and I'm gonna tell you, if you have diabetic patients, these patients should be coming in every three or four months. They're all 4910s in our practice. And we watch them very, very carefully. Man, we, we, we can watch them with their, with their endocrinologist and even moderate some of their medications based on their oral health. And now the big thing, immunity. And how does immunity play into this? It's really quite interesting. There are now theories that immunity has, a, has almost a huge role in how the body's corresponding or really responding to COVID-19. And periodontal disease lowers the body's immunity. So if you think about it, part of what we're dealing with with COVID patients is if we can up the immunity status of our patients long-term, potentially if they get COVID, they may not have the same serious ramifications that so many people are having. And again, I know only 5% to 7% of people have serious complications, and I can't directly, of course, equate it to periodontal disease, but we all know periodontal disease lowers the body's immunity. So just food for thought with COVID. So with all these issues of comorbidities and periodontal disease, my whole feeling is we have been thinking for years in the box. And I mean years. We've approached the biofilm, we've really approached, I would say biofilm 
always with traditional and maybe some newer mechanical removal therapies. But traditionally, it's been hand or ultrasonics. We'll touch on it tonight. But we've also added new approaches that enhance biofilm removal and what we would call our results in our dental hygiene operatories. These can include Arrestin and PerioChip, and we're not big into it anymore because of PerioProtect. We're, we're a huge laser diode office and a laser CO2 office. All my hygienists have to be certified on diodes in order to practice in my office. But there are therapies with ozone, Linap, and one of the hot new things is guided biofilm removal. And I really believe guided biofilm removal is going to be huge in our practices. Huge. Yet the question, and the question tonight is really, okay, so you have a great hygienist. Whether she's using, you know, GBT guided biofilm therapy, she's using lasers or he's using lasers. Whether you are using arresting, whether you're doing Lanap, whatever you're doing, you still have to deal with maintenance. I have a great periodontist in my neighborhood who does Lanap, and I'm the one who maintains his patients. And Perio Protect has been instrumental in maintaining his patients. Because again, you can go from health out of and, and, and really go down that you know negative pathway. We all know that because periodontal disease is a disease that can go into remission and come out. So to me, it's a lifelong issue. So how do we best maintain our patients long-term? And I think we have been thinking the same thing year after year after year. And of course, there've been great advancements. I'm gonna show you what I think is the greatest advancement in the latest toothbrush. But again, there's only so much periodontal prone patients with comorbidities can do. And so we need to do more to maintain them. And I look at it this way, you know, your hygienists out there are spending three or four hours a year, a year trying to maintain someone, someone's periodontal status. Now think about that. They, they literally, they come in every three months, maybe every four months and you give them a year. I mean, you give them an hour. And you're doing a 4910. We're not even talking active therapy. So you give them an hour. But in that hour, you're also doing other diagnostic tests. So in our office, we basically equate instrumentation to 30 minutes maximum in a 4910. If they're falling down or falling apart, then we bring them right back into active therapy. So think about this. You're asking to control this disease every three months or four months with 30 minutes of actual instrumentation, then the patient goes home. And if they have fours, five, sixes, and sevens, and they've had other issues, how are they gonna best maintain? How far can that floss reach or that water pick or that toothbrush? And we all know this, yet we think what we're doing is the right way. And I'm not so sure it is the right way based on what I've seen using Perio Protect over the last five years with over well over 300 plus cases that I would almost term refractory cases and how much better they've turned around. And we'll show you some tonight. We all know the hidden disease, the hidden disease of treating very, it, it, it's, it is a hidden disease and the hidden disease is really the microbes. And when we, patients don't understand it and all too often hygienists forget this, but you can't. How do we control these microbes? How do we control them from reorganizing biofilms and getting back to bleeding on probing, more pocket depth? And if you think the answer is just flossing and brushing, yes, that can be in twos, threes, and maybe fours, but we need more than that. There is no doubt we need more than that. So I'm gonna take you to an article 25 years ago from a journal nobody's ever read. Why would you? It's from the Journal of Microbial Methods. And it was the article was how do you stabilize the pocket immediately after treatment? And here's what's amazing. If you remove half the initial biofilm, it will regrow back fourfold, 400% in three hours. 
If you remove the initial biofilm, 75%, it will regrow back in 300% in three hours. So the moment you debride those pockets, the moment biofilm will start to, again, rejuvenate, regrow. And obviously the whole idea is based on the studies, we try to bring them back three months, every three months to minimize that regrowth but we all know those toxins and everything else can be occurring well before those three months, which furthers the problem of periodontal disease. So I really think it becomes critical, critical to understand long-term periodontal health is about biofilm management. I, I am not replacing the hygienist here. And I know I've got plenty of you on this. This is what I call a great adjunct to the wonderful hygienists out there. I, I look at hygienists as partners in my practice, as associates in my practice. They help me co-diagnose in my practice. I know that's a bad word to say, but they absolutely do in my practice. And they think more than just perio. But I really wanna talk about biofilm management. So the key issue after your therapy, and it could be after active therapy, it could be during active therapy, or it could be therapy for 4910s, is how do we maintain these patients? And when I think about it, I keep going back to two, three, four times a year, no more than two hours really of instrumentation. So the first thing I wanna do is kind of show you the latest. I, am, I was part of this Procter & Gamble evaluator group uh, I have many power brushes in our practice and in my home. This power brush to me is the most unique thing I've actually ever had in my mouth. It is a, it, it is run with a linear magnetic drive. It creates the micro vibrations that many of us have been come accustomed to with Sonicare. It totally overwhelms you with the micro vibrations. And it also has the traditional oscillation rotation. And I'll show you on the next slide how that works. The smart sensor pressure is, uh, it, it to me is very, very unique because it's really vibrant and red and green and it teaches patients really how to minimize uh, over brushing or under brushing. The brush heads are totally unique and there's total interactivity, which I'll show you. So when I, when I look at what's going on here, you have an oscillating rotating brush, which goes in and out now with sonic vibration. And I don't care what anybody says to me, I will always swear by the rounded head because the rounded head is in my bathroom, my patient's bathrooms, my family's bathrooms, because I can go tooth by tooth. I'm not slamming any of the other brushes. And there's some that I would not use or recommend in my practice and some I would other than this one. But to me, this is the Cadillac. And I'll show you why it's the Cadillac going further. So what this will do is this is gonna help guide our patients to understanding how to brush better. Yes, we know about the two minute timers on our brushes today, but this new toothbrush actually allows a patient to see where they're not brushing. And the studies show it becomes critical because the hidden areas, and those could be the posterior buccal and lingual areas, anterior lingual areas. What the studies show is they can be completely missed 22% of the time and underbrush 22%. So how are we gonna better maintain our patients? We need far better technology to guide our patients and change their habits. I, I, I truly believe most patients just don't know how to brush their teeth. And the hygienist's role in doing this becomes essential, it becomes essential. So a study from that was published showed that if you are guided, guided by seeing where you're not brushing with, and, and by using position detection, you will have a fourfold increase in better brushing. So I, do I believe that patients can be guided beyond test drives, you bet. Do I think patients need to be reminded? You bet, because most patients just brush and they're just thinking about their daily activities or what happened throughout the day, and they need to be guided. And part of maintenance 
is proper brushing. So I think this will be a huge, a huge home run in our practices. But even with great brushes, even with water picks, which I love, and we absolutely emphasize them with our adult patients, very often patients need more. They just need more. And that's what we're here for tonight. And, and, and I want to present the world of Perio Protect. So the first thing you have to understand is, is that this is an FDA cleared prescription medical device. This is not a suck down. And many dentists throughout the years that I've taught this think I'll just make a suck down. Well, this is not a suck down. And when a company has to go get FDA clearance, it's huge. And I think it's really important that even though I'm gonna be talking about hydrogen peroxide, you can place a wide variety of medicaments in these trays. And it's really up to you on how you wanna guide your patients with those medicaments. Now we're a big hydrogen peroxide office, but we use other solutions too. And so I can tell you it's all about the tray. The tray is the critical aspect of the system. The peroxide's great, it's what works. We'll get into it, but it's really all about the tray. It's, it's made out of a very comfortable, flexible material. There are special seals, which I will show you, that create what I call a gasket-like seal. And this will keep the medication in the pocket to allow its therapeutic effect. This is not a bleaching tray, nor a suck down. So as you look at the gasket seal here, you can see the individual teeth. And there is a seal buckle and lingually around each and every tooth. Now, how Perio Protect does this, along with their five, uh, I guess their five accepted labs that partner with Perio Protect, when you're when you see a patient, you send in a full mouth Perio probing. And I'll show you, it can be traditional impressions or scanned impressions, but you must sell send in full mouth probings. And what they then do is they have a custom technique on scoring the model and the scoring the model allows them to create this gasket seal. Now, some of you can say, I'll do this in my office and I'll save the $85 they charge you. And I would go, I would think about saving money somewhere else. It's the best $85 you can spend. This is another view of the gasket seal. It just, it doesn't go into the pocket, it hugs the pocket, period. And you have to understand, here's the reason. What happens is, is that you have gingival crevicular flow pumping out 40 times an hour. And so if you do just a rinse, let's just say a scope rinse, what's the substantivity of that rinse? It's going to be pumped out almost immediately. And the idea here is to have a gel that when the hydrogen peroxide breaks down, it will break down into water and oxygen. And it has to have the time to work against the biofilm. You all know, of course, that the bad bugs are the anaerobes or the obligate anaerobes in the system. You all know this. You've been trained on it. But just simply taking a curette and even a curette and doing curatage or a scaler doing scaling. And even just with a laser, you're, you're getting a therapeutic effect right there, but how do we want to work? How do we want to maintain a healthy biofilm? And I think one of those key aspects is oxygen. So this is really the idea. If, if you look at this cross section, there's your sulcus and it's just pumping out fluid. So the whole idea is, is if we're gonna use a tray, we've gotta keep that gel in, around, in and around those pockets and penetrating those pockets. And the key is it's time, and you'll see the amount of time in a few minutes, but I'll just tell you it's a 10 or 15 minute daily application, daily. And when I look at it, that this system will enhance your long-term success. So here's your hygienist, or you're the hygienist and you're working your butt off. My two hygienists work their butt off today. 
And I, I will tell you that when they see patients who cannot maintain their periodontal health, one of the first things we're thinking about is Perio Protect. And for me, for me, it's the ideal therapy for our 4910s. And as an adult dentist, you have so many patients out there with 10 or more bleeding sites. And that's my definition. If you have 10 or more bleeding sites during a periodontal visit, and they just keep coming back every three months, and there's still 10 or more sites bleeding on probing, come on. Come on, we got to be thinking differently. And I will tell you, our big thing is that we have a lot of patients who've had surgery. They don't want to have surgery again. They're breaking down and they're going to five, sixes, and even sevens. They're coming in for hygiene, but they don't want surgery. And we've had two Lenat patients. They didn't want to go through it again, and they were breaking down. And I term these refractory patients. You know, it's so interesting. When I went through my initial periodontal, I mean, my perioprotect training, my periodontist who comes to my practice, one of my closest buddies in the world, he said, the system is ridiculous. It's nothing. He's now my number one referral. Why? Because he has seen the long-term effects of patients having surgeries on perioprotect and having long-term success. And so he's my number one guy. Implants. The, the literature shows up to 50% of patients with implants have perimucositis. How do you protect patients from losing bone and going to peri-implantitis? And so this is one of the must that we do with our implant patients. If we have a patient who gets an implant and they have fours, fives, and sixes in the rest of their mouth, and they're doing their best and coming in for 4910s, they go on perioprotect. It's part of our protocol. And they also, um, we make retainers for all of our implant patients. Why? Up to 60% are going to develop open contacts. And we know this. We've seen this. Teeth move, implants don't. So this is additional ways. Once you have an open contact, then you have a food trap, carries more perio. This is a system that allows you to augment your long-term success. And I will say long-term success with your implant patients, as we just covered. In this COVID era, there's also a different option, and I'll cover it. It allows you to kickstart the process of periodontal therapy, often minimizing the usage of ultrasonics. Now, let me just quite clearly say this. Are we using ultrasonics in my office? You bet. We all, all my hygienists have everything that they need. And of course, the most critical is high back. You gotta have, you know, strong, you know, suction. You gotta have high back, no question about it. But to me, ultrasonics is not going away. I've seen the presentations about aerosol. And as long as you're sucking up that aerosol, and yes, you could have some aerosol that escapes. And that's why we have air filtration systems and air purification systems in our office. But deep, deep down, it's all about that high evacuation. It's a system that is ideal for your geriatric patients who have difficult brushing and taking care of their oral health. I have a ton of geriatric patients. Geriatric patients to me are 80 and above. And I will tell you, we use this in combinations, and I'll touch on that in just a few minutes, with what, what I would call remineralization creams. Why? Because they're high caries risk and they're high perio risk. We use the trays for both. And in that, whether you want to use MI Paste from GC America, Remin-Pro, from uh, Voco, you want to use enamel on gel from Premier. Those are just examples of using this tray at night and patients wearing the trays for 30 minutes or even sleeping in it with these Remin creams. But in the morning, they're using Perio Protect trays for 10 or 15 minutes to make sure we're minimizing biofilm re regrowth. The concept is it's a Perio gel. It's a low dose hydrogen peroxide. You will bleach your patient's teeth. Hands down, just know up front, if you've got, if you're treating perio and they've got a, a crown on number eight and the rest of the teeth bleach, you better tell your patients ahead of time. I'm telling you they'll bleach. Now, if that's a big problem, 
then you're going to have to come up with an alternative to the perio gel. Uh, one of those right now and that we're evaluating is a molecular um, iodine product, and it's molecular iodine gel. And it can be used even in combination with perio gel. I think both are fantastic. But obviously, a molecular iodine gel won't stain your teeth, but it's also not going to bleach your teeth. And I will tell you, my patients love having bleached teeth. Love it. I don't care what age they are. But the idea is, it's the concept is with hydrogen peroxide, it's, it's all about the ability to really debride subgingival to work with the area of debrided subgingival planktonic cells. So here's what happens. Hygienis goes in and basically uh, disrupts the biofilm. That's what that hygienist is doing. They're trying to remove the biofilm and disrupt it. And that's great. And what the peroxide wants to do, it wants to stop the regrowth of that biofilm. And it wants to shift the biofilm more into a defensive mode, limiting their ability to reproduce or trigger inflammation. That's the goal. It's that simple. How well studied is this? Well, when I first went and learned about Perio Protect, I didn't like it. I openly didn't like it because years and years ago, they were espousing to antibiotic use in the trays. Well, the companies evolved years and years ago to a hydrogen peroxide use and not antibiotics. And Dwayne Keller really led that huge transition. Dwayne is the founder. He's a GP who specializes in TMJ. And I'll say, like me, we just love periodontal disease and to treat it. And what this journal showed in its article was that you can have this with, with this gasket seal, the hydrogen peroxide can penetrate up to nine millimeters. In no way am I saying you should just watch nine millimeter pockets and just use Perio Protect. But what I can tell you is, is when I have geriatric patients who have sevens and eights, they don't want to have surgery. They're coming in for their hygiene visits and they're in their late 80s. And I want to reduce their bleeding on probing. This is what I turn to. And they could have fives bleeding, sixes, sevens. It doesn't matter. This literature showed up to nine millimeters. So as I said earlier, it's all about the exposure time. How long do you wear these trays? So when Protect started doing their studies about time, they first went in at five minutes. And at five minutes, this system does virtually nothing. So when you're the hygienist or the assistant going over the instructions, the instructions clearly have to be, you have to wear this for 10 to 15 minutes. It's a quiz question, by the way. 10 to 15 minutes, okay? And I'll tell you where they're wearing them and stuff like that. But with 10 to 15 minutes within the pocket was a total kill. And that's the oxygen release from the hydrogen peroxide breakdown. And that's the goal. This was really the first lecture that turned me uh, outside of the initial Perio Protect courses. And it was from a guy named Dr. Bruce Cochran. So he's a Perio Pros. And his cases were unbelievable. He's out of Iowa. And two years ago, when I was teaching in Iowa, this was a coincidence, two of his hygienists were in my course. And I was teaching this. So I showed the slide and kind of made their day, I think. Well, what I can tell you is, is he found whether patients are smokers or non-smokers, they had a huge significance, huge significance in decreasing bleeding on probing. And I will also tell you, we have seen over time, those sixes turn to fives, maybe fours, those seven turn to fives with therapy. So I believe reducing inflammation with good therapy and perioprotect, you will see pocket reduction in addition to significantly decreased bleeding on probing. So this is the gel we use. This is, we buy this through perioprotect. And it is a 1.7% hydrogen peroxide. So what I thought I would show you is, is how we use this over the last five years in my practice. We call our 
the way we do scaling and planing with lasers, we call it sequential. When basically we'll do a full mouth in one or two visits. And if the patient has sixes, sevens, and eights, we'll go back and do isolated laser therapy and scaling and planing one additional time. Because I think it's very hard for a hygienist to nail and remove all the biofilm of seven, eight, and nine millimeter pockets. The anatomy of teeth makes it too challenging. So we like to go back after we do full mouth a week to two weeks later and go after only those areas that are sixes through nines. And we use PerioProtect openly when that treatment isn't successful, when they're still bleeding on probing. And I term those refractory patients. They could have good oral hygiene and they're still going downhill. We've seen that, you'll see the case of Tom tonight. Patients prior to active therapy, and especially now in this COVID area, I'll show you a system of how we start using this before we start doing our scaling and planning. As I mentioned, we use this ongoing for perimucositis with implants, along with peri-implantitis. We do treat our peri-implantitis patients. Now we're just more proactive in trying to minimize perimucositis by giving this, well, not giving, but including this in our treatment plan for our patients who are getting implants. Patients with medical histories that want to reduce their oral inflammation from comorbidity diseases. Patients who want to bleach their teeth have been too sensitive. This has been a great system. And our high caries risk patients, our xerostomic patients, this really falls into our geriatric group where we're using our creams and pastes. This is an absolute in all our oral cancer with radiation ports. We have three hospitals who refer their patients to us. This is standard protocol for minimizing, obviously, caries and perio in what we would call highly susceptible areas that were within the radiation ports. So Perio Protect will support each and every hygienist who trains with them by giving you educational videos. And I'm, we're a big believer of videos in our office. And as basic as a video can be that a toothbrush can't remove all the plaque and biofilm, we'll just show them how the trays work. Again, up to nine millimeters. And you will just see a huge amount of decrease in bleeding. And the patients themselves will just say, I feel better. We hear this all the time. So what do you charge, Lou? I charge $400, $425 for a perio, for a perio protect tray. That's with a traditional impression. If I do digital, it's $450. The fee's a little higher from the labs. And the reason is they do a digital, they, they first do a 3D print, then they take an impression of the 3D print, printed model, pour that up in stone, and then they score the model. It's hard to score a 3D printed model. At delivery, we give them two tubes of the perio gel. The cost cost me $16 a tube, at least I think it does, and we sell it for $25 after their first two tubes. Most patients we have found assume about 10, buy about 10 tubes a year. So again, it's a small profit for our office of an additional about $100 a year. The profitability in this is if you're charging what I charge and you can charge less and there are people who charge more, it's up to you. Your cost is about $95 to $100 taking the impressions and sending it in. So I'm making about $300 per arch. Over the last five years, we've made over a quarter of a million dollars, plus the recall care, plus the tubes that we sell, Plus, I don't do anything. The hygienist routinely is the one who diagnoses this with me coming in, probing, confirming, and then the assistant does the scan and the delivery. I'm just happy to be offering this in my practice and working with great hygienists. The instructions, you wear these 10 to 15 minutes a day during maintenance. For the two patients who are in the midst of therapy that we saw today, they wear them routinely twice a day, morning and evening during treatment. And why? Because they're in the midst of treatment. The biofilm is being disrupted. So what happens is when a patient comes in and gets a 4910, I tell every patient, you've got to wear it the night of your hygiene appointment and the following morning. 
when they're in treatment for very active treatment, it's morning and evening, period. And that's what we do. They wear them for 10 minutes or 15, rinse them out and brush their teeth. When do patients wear them? In the shower. It's the best recommendation. If someone says they don't shower every day, you just look at them and say, you should. And routinely, they, it becomes clockwork. I'm getting in the shower, I'm wearing my trays, I rinse them off in the shower, and then I'm gonna brush my teeth. And you just rinse them out afterwards, and the system comes with a great little box or kit, and you just allow them to air dry. Then you just brush your teeth. It's that simple. Routinely, the patients will just say, I love the freshness. That's what they'll tell you. My mouth has never felt fresher. Most patients don't know their gums are bleeding. I really believe that. They come in, I didn't know my gums bleed, and you're probing and you're watching them bleed to death. Most patients don't know it, but they will tell you, my mouth feels better. So I will go and tell you, first off, if you're on tonight's course, Perio Protect has agreed to offer their online training complimentary. It's about an hour and a half. My entire team took it, and I have two hygienists, one hygienist who just joined my team, part of the COVID changes, and she's now going to take her training on it. Great hygienist, but I want her obviously trained on Perio Protect. It's so significant. But I would tell you everybody should take this course. Your front team needs to understand when patients ask questions about money. Your assistants, they're the key in this. The hygienists, they're diagnosing and monitoring. And this really is the breakdown of it. That's why everybody must be a part of the training. So what do you do? You do it at 3 o'clock, so you go 3 to 4.30, or you just have an extended lunch. But don't think you're going to learn this in 15 minutes. It's a great review course on Perio Protect. So the assistant can either digitally scan or take a traditional impression. I don't care. We really, we pretty much are all digital at this point in our office, but you can still use a traditional scan. So what about, how would you take a great impression? You've got to capture the gingiva. You've got to capture the tooth, but you've also got to capture the gingival area so you can make a, a, a great gasket seal. So here's the way we do it. We'll do a little wax for a little border molding, not we, my assistant. And then we use the Kettenbach products. I will put my reputation on it. Kettenbach makes, in our world, the best, the best putty. We love their putty. Well, they make great impression material. They make great products. Their putty is just drop dead. So you mix a scoop of each. You roll it in a ball. And then you place it. And it's just you just place it like as a horseshoe. I don't need the palate. And it's the same on the lower. And But before you place it in the mouth, you're going to inject a little light body right into the putty. So you place the light body in, and then you insert for the two and a half minutes. Now, there's one other way you can do this. You can take an impression with the putty, and you put cellophane over it. This is a... This is a, a, a this is from the, the bleaching impression era of core. And what core would teach is to take a, the best impression, you would, you would basically put a little cellophane over your putty, take it out after two and a half minutes, peel the cellophane off, and then what you'll do is you inject the light body in and then put reinsert it. Now, obviously, it takes five minutes versus two and a half minutes. But again, you could put cellophane over the body, take it out after two and a half minutes, and then place your light body in as a wash, reinsert. Either works great. The key is you got to get an impression like this. You got to get the tissue buckly and lingually, and it works the same for digital. I've seen terrible digital scans from Burial Protect. Just because you have a digital scanner doesn't mean you're taking good impressions. You got to send them an ideal impression. It's got to have the tissue and teeth. Just a little helpful tip. This is one of my favorite products from Ultranet. They make great products, obviously, and it's their oral seal putty. I use this all day, all day when I'm making temporaries, I'm blocking out implants, I'm taking impressions. But if, if I can only tell you this is why I use it versus putting wax, which will block out the gingival tissue. If you've got geriatric patients with huge embrasures, you don't want the 
you don't want the impression to get stuck. So I'll use some putty in the large embrasures. It's not like you're, you just place the putty, pack it in, and then you just scoop it and rinse it out after the impression. And that's the putty from Ultradam. Cases. I think it's really great that we go over cases. I'll try to speed it up a little bit. This is Sid. She had an aortic valve surgery two years ago, and she's a refractory perio patient. She came in, and on recall, she was coming out of, she was in health, and then she went downhill. So she has a new valve. She's got now a lot of inflammation and bleeding, over four quadrants of bleeding with 50 bleeding on probing areas. She was alarmed. Her cardiologist even mentioned oral health. So we digitally scanned her explain to her about grinding and all the other things that she denies. So these are what you'll get back are your digital models. There's no gasket. There's no, you don't get the stone models back. You get your 3D printed models back. This is the setup. And there's a carrying case. There's your two tubes of gel. And we just show a patient how to place it in. So we give them routinely when they come in about 10, 10 of these brushes. The assistant tries it in first before placing the gel in. You want no movement. Yeah, I would say maybe out of the 300 cases, we've re-impressed eight or 10. I'm not perfect. My assistant's not perfect, nor is anybody. So you want to make sure it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, I use these great scissors. These are from Ultradent. I've never found a better pair of scissors to trim, you know, soft night guards, bleaching trays, things like that. So we'll trim it this way. And to polish it, we use a soft bristle brush that uh, openly we use to polish our relines, our soft relines, our in-office soft relines. After we try it in, the assistant will load it. And basically we'll put pretty much a drop in a molar area on each side, a drop in each canine and a drop in the central incisor. And we just smear it. You know, you can just inject directly, but that's too much. All you need are five drops and it, you don't need to fill up these teeth. Trust me, you don't need to do it. Just five drops, molars, canine, central incisor. And then the patient just has to spread it. It's not challenging. Then they wear them for 10 minutes. We wanna make sure they're comfortable. Sometimes they'll say they can feel it on their gums. It is a bleach, but it's very low concentrate. She came back six months later. Her bleeding points went from 50 to two. 50 to two. She lost her trays in Baltimore. She was frantic. And this is what my team told her. Your trays are in the cloud because we use iTero. They're stored in the cloud. All we had to do was literally go to myitero.com, send them back to the lab, and the lab made us new trays. We only charge $100 when we remake trays. Whatever our cost is, I'm not there going to charge them another 400 bucks case after case in our offices. 90-year-old patient, 14-year-old aging implant. How are you going to maintain this? There's her digital scan, capturing the tissue. There's her tray. We had to trim it upper right corner because it was contacting her frenum, getting her frenum too much. Another geriatric patient getting recurrent decay and inflammation around a partial that looks like it's 500 years old. Just want to show you, look how the tray is made, how it looks just like the abutment teeth on the partial. We didn't even make it for her lower teeth. She's got great lower hygiene, little calculus on one tooth, big deal. She's 93. But look at how this tray fits on the top. We're not going to get recurrent decay underneath this partial with this because we're going to use a remineralizing cream along with the gel. These are her hands, and we're just showing her one drop in each tooth. You can see the customized gasket seal, and it's just holding the gel in place. Another view of it. This is Tom, and I think it's important. Tom was truly refractory patient. He was in his uh, early 60s. I think he was 60, maybe 59 when he came to me 12 years ago. In fact, he was in his mid to late 50s. I see a great patient. He was referred to me because I do a lot of perio in my practice. 
And Peridonis gave up on him. He had multiple surgeries before. And I'm going to say this guy came into our office and he was religious. And this is long before Perio Protect. So when 080 starts and we're putting localized antimicrobials in, we're doing laser assisted periotherapy. We're doing everything we can. We did DNA culturing, made him an occlusal night guard after we equilibrated him. Following year, same thing. He's coming in, he's still bleeding on probing, bleeding on probing. We're doing, on the bottom, you can see we're scaling and planing for quad. In fact, you can also see, not yet, it's coming. We start doing surgeries. So now we're back to doing surgeries in addition to scaling and planing. We were using closest at that time. Now we use Oricare. It's a far better activated chlorine dioxide. Closest is gone. And he just kept coming back and back and back and back. And in 2014, 15, that's when it all changed. So he joined our dental plan. That's our in-office dental plan, which we absolutely believe is the best prevention plan. You can see Oricare. That's his rinse. Now there's the perio trays with the gel. That was the turnaround. Restoratively, he was in great shape, not getting caries. All of his mouth had been fixed up over the previous years with me and the previous dentist. But he still had bleeding on probing. Multiple bleeding on probing. And this guy flosses, proxy brushes, uses hydrofloss, everything genetic issue, I think. So what happens? He comes in and at some point you just go, we're not getting anywhere. We take impressions and we deliver the trays and he starts wearing the trays twice a week, real, I'm sorry, twice a day for two weeks before beginning active therapy. So we started him wearing the trays before we started again active therapy. Active therapy was one or two visits. It was two visits in his case. And we never probe for three months. We don't probe for three months. We'll evaluate six weeks later to see how he's doing. These are his trays. I'm just trying to pick up the pace. Nice tori. This is his three month recall. And there's a little bleeding on probing. And what it routinely is, it's a restorative issue. So my hygienists know, have my high-speed hand piece ready, have my finishing burrs ready. I had to smooth that composite. Look at the tissue. And this is tough tissue to keep from bleeding. He's got a long interproximal papilla. That's the worst type. Another bleeder, couple composites. Bleeder on the lower left, zirconia crown that I did. And there was a slight overhang over the furcation, trimming and polishing. You're not, you're not gonna get perfect health if, you're, if you have bad dentistry and there were not ideal dentistry. You can feel the difference within a week. This is a guy we treated for years. This is Tom, 2019 recall. Yeah, I could redo some of his composites. One or two bleeders, one or two bleeders, no pocketing over a three bleach teeth. I want to touch on two things tonight before I finish. I know I'm going a little long, but I just want to show you reducing aerosols. This is an entirely different approach. I know there are hygienists out there who want to minimize ultrasonics or at least minimize how much they use it. So this is from Perio Protect and it's called our IRX protocol. And basically, you don't sudden full mouth probings. You just basically, the protocol is you just take impressions prior to any periodontal treatment being done. And you're trying to minimize extensive ultrasonics. You can do digital or traditional. You'll get the trays two or three weeks later, and they're wearing them two, twice a day prior to treatment for 15 minutes. Twice a day, maintenance again is 10 or 15 minutes. And we don't really send probings because usually they're just too much tartar. Just want to show you, this is two weeks of perio tray therapy. So on one side, you see the inflammation, they wear for two weeks, that's their, now they're going to come in. And so much of the diseased tissue is already starting to come down and the tartar itself 
gets very, very softened by this, so it's much easier for the hygienist. This is a typical example of what you'll see. This is one month, a lot of inflammation, much less inflammation than the tartar starting to almost dissolve, much easier for the hygienist to remove. And again, look at one side versus the other, inflammation to the other, just wearing the trays before therapy. Classic, classic. And again, it's not gonna remove, it doesn't take the place of a hygienist, but that's the difference of just one month. And these aren't even the tightest fitting trays because you impressed routinely over calculus. And last, this is my last, I promise. So this patient came into my practice. He was 47 years old, total genetic issue. And he's a genetics professor at the University of Chicago. He's 47 years old. That's the Panorex that was sent to me. And what are the chances of implant success? When I teach implants, I will absolutely tell you the workup is critical. This guy was doomed to fail, doomed to, to fail. There is implants, losing multiple threads of bone. He has poor hygiene, aggressive, previous aggressive periodontal issues. And why would you place implants in somebody like that until you have the perio stable? But this is what goes on. Oh, there's bone, let's place some implants. You gotta get the perio totally stable because that bacteria is going to get right around those implants and good luck to you. So we introduced him to Perio Protect, did full mouth debridement, treated the implants. I want to show you the results. I'm going to tell you, most people will look at the bone loss on this guy in this 3D, and I'm a huge cone beam guy, and look at the furcations. And I'm telling you, the studies go, we can maintain maintain teeth so much longer than we give them credit to being maintained and it's all about therapy and maintenance i'm going to show you what he looks like now live look at that hygiene that's perio protect only once a day for 15 minutes you saw all the bone loss he's got sevens eights furcations through and through furcations doesn't want to lose his teeth does not want to lose his teeth, doesn't want all, all on fours, wants his teeth. So that's the turnaround. Yes, I do occlusal adjustments. I've lost one tooth in eight years with this guy. One tooth. So tonight, my goal. My goal was to really show you new strategies on how you can really increase superior maintenance coupled with your wonderful hygiene care. This is always coupled with great oral hygiene, both from the hygienist and obviously the patient doing whatever they can at home. With that, Lisa, I'll turn it over. I, I know I ran a few minutes long, but that's typical. Let's take some questions before everybody gets either to dinner or cocktails. Uh, first question, if you make trays before cleaning the teeth, do you then take the new impressions after and make new trays and how do you charge? So I, I think that's a great question. So openly, what I would do is if I do the R IRX system, it's actually a less expensive tray. So we've only done two of them in my practice thus far during COVID. The fee we charged was two fifty five, not four fifty. So what we did was we put them on the trays. One of the patients, they still fit pretty good and we were getting good maintenance out of him. The other one needed new trays. So with the new patient, what we did was we charged the second set of trays, the difference. So we charged basically $200 or I think 250, it was 200 or 250 for the second trays. Here's what I will tell you. I personally believe the way to do this is if you have somebody come into your practice and there's just a boatload of tartar, you have your hygienist do their initial therapy and remove all the tartar super gingivally. That's when I take my impressions. So I'll take my impressions after we remove the boatload of tartar super gingival. They come in, they get the trays, wear them for two weeks, and then they go through their rounds of scaling and planing. But basically, I'm not trying to up the fee. I think our total fee for those, the patient who needed 
paraprotect trays, the total fee was basically $500 total for both systems. That's what we did. Okay, great question. Next question. Do you use ozone in the trays? And if so, how does it work? We're not an ozone office. I absolutely respect I respect offices that are using ozone. I have no issues. I respect it. I'd love to learn more about ozone and start implementing that in my office. But to my understanding, ozone is a treatment in the office. This is a maintenance system with a gel. So that's how I would look at it. Ozone's in the office use. This system is obviously for at-home use. Do you send the impressions off to any lab? Another great question. There are five certified labs, I believe, from PerioProtect. It could be more, it could be less. But the answer is I only send them to one of the labs that are certified that follow the exact protocols of PerioProtect. PerioProtect has their own lab, and I think four or five other labs that do the work. Like my Crown and Bridge lab, my removable lab, don't do it. Do you include this as part of your treatment plan and scale and root planning? So openly, if, if, if I see a patient who comes in with some isolated bleeding, let's say 10 or 15 areas of bleeding, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll do the scaling and planing and see if we can get those four or fives under control, then I don't often say that this is a requirement. On the other hand, to the question, if someone comes in with a history of scaling and planing and perio surgeries, and they're going downhill and they have moderate, let's just say moderate, and they've already lost cl clinical attachment, then it is absolutely. So I think it's case by case. If it's mild to moderate and I can turn it around, the answer is no. But if there's a history and it's been an unsuccessful history, I would immediately jump right into this and I can guarantee you that patient will have far better long-term success. So yes, yes, but it's case, it's patient and case specific. What's the verbiage you use when recommending perioprotective patients and what are the costs per arch? The cost to reiterate, the cost to reiterate, uh, the trays cost me, I just got a setback. Uh, they were, uh, I think around 85 or $90. So the cost, is the person taking the impression, the time, sending the scan and getting it. So I equate the cost to about a buck and a quarter. So if someone loses a tray, I charge them a buck and a quarter, 125 bucks. So that's the cost. The language that I use is, is that we're dealing with a microbial disease, an ongoing disease that can be infectious and obviously all about the comorbidities. And routinely, I just, I'll walk in with a hygienist and I just sit the patient down for five minutes. I give them a pamphlet. I tell them to go online. And I basically tell them, we're not getting your periodontal disease under control. And when I start talking about all the issues of systemic effects, and I do bring in the systemic issues, that's usually the game changer for them. Most patients don't equate it uh, unless they've heard about it or read about it. So I think you have to equate the the bacterial issue involved the microbes look i think if you have a microscope and you want to show the little swimmers i think it's great but i i always relate it to systemic problems and the other thing i will say lisa is i believe if you don't have a good foundation all the restorative work is is for naught and routinely i'll tell my patients if we're about to undergo some big therapy then openly restorative therapy this is going to be their almost one of their ways to guarantee long-term success. Now, that being said, I want everybody to know this. If I'm doing implant therapy, sometimes I, I've made some patients three trays and I only charge them full price once. Why? All of a sudden now I'm adding teeth and all of a sudden now they decided I'm gonna, I want more implants done. They wanna fill in 19 and 30. Well, the trays aren't gonna fit. I only charge them a hundred bucks, $125. It's their long-term coming into my practice that I care about. The initial fee is only once. Okay, next. So to kind of piggyback on that question, then how do you approach patients who need this therapy but are very financially reluctant? Okay, so let's say you have a patient who can't afford it. Your cost is 125 bucks. If you wanna charge them $125, do it. 
Do I give away my trades for $125 on patients who go, I can afford the scaling and planning, but I really can't afford another $800? And I know they can, of course I'll do it. I'll discount it all day long if I need to. But I don't wanna make that an overall policy. I just don't. But do I discount it? If you know your cost is $125, to me, that is not a huge cost. Even if someone's financially compromised, I still believe for $125 in your cost, it's fair to charge them that fee. Will insurance cover the trace? Uh, you know, it's interesting. There are isolated insurance companies that actually do cover the trace, and they're isolated. So I would tell you most insurance companies, I hate them all pretty much. So I would say you can do a pre-treatment estimate. I think Perio Protect as a company can tell you which insurance companies currently do take them. But for the most part, I tell most patients we'll do whatever we can, but I don't want the insurance company to dictate your oral health. So I routinely take the insurance company out of it. How long does it usually take to get the trays back after sending off the impressions? Well, I'd like to say a week, but it's never a week unless I'm begging. It's, I would say on average with a digital scan, it's two weeks. And depending on the lab with a traditional impression, it could be up to three weeks. So my hygienists book their scaling and planings two weeks after the delivery. So it could be five weeks after their initial debridement. And the kind of good thing is my hygienists are so booked, they got to find the time in five weeks. So it kind of works well. Three weeks to get, two to three weeks to get the trays, two weeks wearing them. And by then my hygienists are then already scheduled, you know, their one and two hour treatments, you know, for the patient. Does this system cause issues to the joint? So let, let us go clearly. I love the question, you're wearing them, 10 or 15 minutes once or twice a day routinely you're in the shower i don't see how this could possibly cause any joint disease to the person who's asking when my geriatric patients fall asleep with them at night i can only tell you that it's kind of like a soft night guard and i'm not a big soft night guard person in fact i don't like soft night guards but I will tell you it's a 10 or 15 minute use and that's not gonna cause joint problems. I personally hate treating perio problems because I have to depend on patient compliance for results. Can this system be done by my hygienists who are excellent at hygiene and are motivated? Yes, I, I think you gotta tie in your assistants because the assistants take the great impressions. So to the doctor who says, I hate doing that, I will tell you, I hear you. And when I walk into a room, my patients shiver because if I'm walking into a room because they suck at oral hygiene and my hygienist says, you got to get better. I hear it and I'm walking in. And honestly, I'm really demanding. But again, if someone thinks that they can brush with a manual toothbrush to oral health, good luck. So we're, we're full focus on getting a patient to better oral health. I'm just going to throw this out there for everybody. There is one great plaque ID gel, and it's the tri plaque ID gel from GC America. It's 20 bucks, and I'm telling you, it's the only plaque ID gel because it tells patients if they're lying or not. It will tell you if you have plaque that has been there for 24 hours or less. If the plaque has been there for more than 24 hours, in other words, they missed it, and it will also show acidogenic bacteria and light blue and why they're getting cavities. So it is, it's called Tri-Plaque Gel from GC America. It's the only plaque gel we use disclosing plaque gel because you can see how old the plaque is and if it's acidogenic. Go on, Lee. Try my best to keep everybody entertained. Does this system help with patients who get heavy tartar buildup? This system helps tremendously with heavy tartar buildup. The, the idea of hydrogen peroxide in itself will break down tartar. So it will minimize recurrence. It won't, it won't oh, say never, but it actually starts to loosen the tartar when the patient's wearing it for literally a week or two. 
if they're if they're using this as maintenance routinely we see minimal minimal and we usually can tell when they're not wearing it because we see the changes bleeding on probing and tartar so i would say it definitely reduces tartar buildup tremendously lower anterior teeth that's always just a tough area because it builds up so fast and just a comment that it helps with halitosis as well yes it does but i would still be scraping my tongues and then again i i, I would also say oracare is a activated uh alumina chlor uh, yeah chlor chlorine dioxide is absolutely fantastic for bad breath uh, again I'm, it's not treating necessarily all perio like this but that's a huge recommendation with oracare for bad breath yeah okay uh looks like that is all we have to my team who's watching and to all my colleagues out there i really thank you for sharing your wednesday night with me i wish you all a great evening and stay safe and stay healthy